Hello, welcome back. Thank you as always for tuning in here today. What I want to talk about over the next few minutes is your value. In other words, your real value. Not the quantifiable values, not these relative values that we place on ourselves and others here in the world, but our true and real value, which quite naturally, as we run around doing our thing, doing life here in the world, we grossly underestimate. It's just where we appear to find ourselves. And as always, let's put emphasis on the word appear to find ourselves. Because this round of suffering, this experience that we refer to as life here in the world, is, in truth, a dream. And we're asleep. That's what's going on here. Anything that is not of God is illusion. Only God is. Now, if you're encountering statements such as these for the first time, welcome. Welcome to A Course in Miracles. Something has led you to this point. So here you are, and should you choose to continue and watch all the way through to the end of this discussion, which of course I invite you to do, you'll hear a message that was intended just for you. I do not know what that may be. Perhaps I've already said it, perhaps I will, but we hear what we're intended to hear. Everything happens for our benefit here. Doesn't feel like it, of course, here in the world where we might get fired from our job one day or a bill will be passed due, we may owe someone money or we get sick, perhaps chronically ill, perhaps all of that at once. Things appear to happen here in the world. So you might rightly ask, how is this actually of benefit to me at all. It sucks. Well, yeah, it does. What's the benefit? The benefit is anything that is not wholly joyous is, in fact, the raw material for forgiveness. It's the raw material for your awakening. It is an opportunity to forgive everything that is not wholly joyous. And you'll experience a lot of that in the next few minutes, most likely. What we don't realize without taking some time out of our daily lives and our daily schedules to actually study and contemplate this material, to actually listen to dialogues such as these, what we don't get is that we have multiple opportunities to forgive. So when you become aware of one, do the forgiveness. And we do it under the guidance of our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit. That's who directs us. In fact, this is the voice that has directed you to watch this video. I don't know how you came across this material, on YouTube amidst all of the other content that's out there, all of the other thumbnails and previews and links and everything, but I'm glad you're here. As we wrap up 
the current section of the text that we've been going through, which is chapter 11, section 6, Waking to Redemption. So in, in these last few paragraphs here, as we wrap it up, there is a, a really powerful injunction here from Jesus. He invites us to teach that he did not die. I'll say more. He did not die by proving that he lives in us. Teach that he did not die by proving that he lives in us. Again, teach that he did not die by proving through our sharing love, extending love, our forgiveness, that he lives in us, which he does. One equals one. There is no separation of any kind. So what role does Jesus play in all of this? Well, he completed his part. He, he's awakened. His forgiveness lessons are complete. So he guides us. In fact, if you're new to A Course in Miracles, this course was dictated to a couple of PhD professionals in New York City in the 1960s and the 1970s. And the voice that authored this course, that sp spoke it into being here in the world, is the voice of Jesus. So it actually makes no difference whether you believe that sort of thing is possible or not. That's not required. All that's required is that you entertain these ideas and that you let them percolate in your mind. If you're doing the workbook, the workbook is very, very clear at the outset that belief is not required. You don't have to believe any of this. You don't have to believe a single word that I say. It's not me speaking anyway. It's your inner teacher. That's the voice that has you here. What you see before you is nothing more than an assemblage of dots really a pixelated image on your screen. When something lands, it's the Holy Spirit. Always count on that. So here in these final paragraphs of the section of the text, Jesus mentions the, the crucifixion, which of course is highly charged as a symbol here in the world. But what about the, the beauty and, and the truth and the call to action of this statement? Teach that I did not die by proving, by showing that I live through you, in you. which he does every time we extend love, every time we extend the miracle of forgiveness to our brother. It's Jesus forgiving. It's the Holy Spirit saying, forgiving. Now you may call your guide or guides, whatever you want. It's the Holy Spirit and you can call it the Holy Spirit if you want to. You can call it Mike, Elvis, many different names. It could be your guides, plural. It's the voice of our inner teacher. One of the ideas that A Course in Miracles repeats in many different ways over and over and over again is the idea of wholeness, which is not mere conjecture, it's not theory, and it's not a pipe dream. It's fact. There is only perfect oneness, wholeness, lacking nothing. 
The Son of God lacks nothing. Here in the world, we appear to lack pretty much everything from time to time, don't we? We might be dead broke and in need of money. We might be unhealthy. We might be perfectly healthy and wealthy in terms of money, yet still be deeply unsettled and wish that we had more, 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 more of this, more of that. Gosh, if only I could do this. If only I could go here. Gosh, if only I could buy that car. Ooh, my life would be complete. And when we entertain ourselves with these thoughts over and over again, which deep down we know that it's not our real life. It's not who we are. This knowledge has you on the spiritual path in the first place. It's about wholeness, completeness, oneness. The Son of God lacks nothing. The Son of God is not a body. You are not a body. I'm not making this up. This is a prevalent, prevalent idea in A Course in Miracles. And by the way, this course is far from the only spiritual tradition to posit that you're not a body. You are, in fact, spirit. And the thought of God. Mm, like extends like. So in the, that sense, this course is hardly unique. What makes it different from a number of traditions, well, from, honestly, the vast majority of traditions that exist here in the world, is that it is a self-study curriculum. It is. It's a self-study curriculum, which we're invited to take as we see fit. We take what we want to take at a given time. So we take what we're willing to take at a given time. Who's the teacher? Our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, who speaks to us of wholeness, which deep down we recognize. We do. We recognize our wholeness. Now, we may not put it in those exact words at any given moment, because who knows what the form of the message is going to be, or the messenger. This is a form of the messenger. YouTube, it's a form of the message, the messenger. The content is exactly the same. You are perfect and whole, just as God created you. We are perfect one, and whole, and one, and whole, just as God created us. So here in the world, your value is beyond measure. It's literally beyond measure. You have a very important, in fact, critical, crucial part to play. Now, what exactly does that entail? Well, your inner teacher will show you what that entails. There are people out there in this world that will respond best to the message of the Holy Spirit through you, not through me, not through some other teacher on YouTube or a podcast or a live stage in this world, but through you. You're the one that will connect the best with these people. How will you do it? Let your inner teacher show you how to do it. Not everyone has to or will hold themselves out as a teacher on YouTube or a podcast or a stage or all three or any public forum like that. This is my own personal calling. You might call it my own personal directive from our inner teacher. Yours may look completely different 
But there are people out there that will respond best to the message of the Holy Spirit through you. You can reach them the best. So this does mean, of course, that each and every one of us has a responsibility to these people, to each other, to continue to forgive, to stay on the path, in a manner of speaking. Our value is inestimable and completely beyond measure. It's inestimable because you can't put a number on it. You can't put a dollar or a euro or a pound figure on it. It's not monetary value. It's not the size of your biceps or your home. It's none of those things. Our value is completely inherent. It's who we are as the Son of God. And each seemingly individual Son of God here in the world, the Son of God is one and whole, here in the world where there appear to be eight billion of us, that is just an appearance, it's an outward form, the content is exactly the same. We're all of equal value all of us, and that value is beyond measure. It's not your credit score. It's not the size or lack of size of your bank account. It's none of those things. It's not your prestige or social status, which are completely illusory anyway. I mean, that's pretty clear to see, isn't it? your reputation, that sort of thing. Your value is beyond measure. You are the Son of God. So Jesus wants us to ponder this message and to accept it. There is tremendous emphasis placed in A Course in Miracles on accepting truth just as it is, not trying to run off and change it, but to accept it just as it is. Because we find along the way that we can't partially accept it. Another way of saying this is the well-known statement from this course that our forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. So true, because you can't wholly forgive if you're harboring some grudges here and little tiny forms of hatred or large forms of hatred here. You can't forgive 99% of the world's population, yet harbor some special disdain for a certain government entity or a government itself or a political party or someone that may have done us harm in this lifetime. Now, if you're not ready to forgive certain people or certain situations, then you won't be presented with them to forgive until such time as you're ready to do it. Our inner teacher knows exactly what to place in your experience that you'll be able to accept without mortal existential dread. The Holy Spirit does not force, and the Holy Spirit is love and kindness. And this is another way of saying you get what you're supposed to get at a given time. So you forgive what comes up for you to forgive. So in wrapping up for today, we're all of equal value. That value is beyond measure. And yes, in the world, when we run off and quantify ourselves, or we place ourselves in certain gradations, hierarchical tiers of social status, economic status and prestige and all of that drama, 
we, we sell ourselves short. And this is an invitation to notice when you're doing that and, and forgive in that moment. And as you go along to stop doing that, right? The more we entertain these ideas, the better. Because your value is completely beyond measure. So I hope that you may realize that today. All right, so I thank you as always for joining me. I'm often called here as the camera is running and the microphone is on to thank you for your dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice. So I thank you for your dedication and commitment to spiritual practice. This, by the way, if you're just tuning in, is the single greatest, most important offering you could give anyone, anywhere, anytime. There is no close second. There's no distant second or third. It's the most important. So it is of tremendous value, inestimable, in fact, that you're here right now. Now, along the way, should you have questions, please feel welcome to leave them here. There have been, as you may have seen, a number of excellent questions about spiritual practice, about A Course in Miracles, right here in the discussion forum on YouTube. So if you have questions or comments, please feel welcome to leave them. And if you have not yet subscribed, please do so. I'd love to have you join us. What we've got here is a growing international community with many people who have recently joined us. So I thank you for that. If you haven't, the subscription prompt here is this arrow in the corner of your screen. When you hover over that or click that, you'll be prompted here to join us. So I hope that you do so. And thank you as always for tuning in. I will see you soon.